to another Facebook Live here at the Toronto Zoo, where it's our mission to connect animals, people, and conservation science to help fight extinction. My name is Laura, and I'm a keeper in the Indomalaya section of the zoo, so part of our job is actually to look after our free-ranging peafowl. So I'm here in their exhibit right now. They're not free-ranging around the zoo quite yet. And they're a little suspicious of us today why we're here making a big fuss about them. So we'll see, they may come a little bit closer as, as we go on. Um, but most people are familiar with our peafowl, are familiar with seeing them in the summertime and seeing them walking around the zoo, running into them up by the restaurants, um, by the African savanna, by the kids zoo. You never know where you might come across one of our peafowl. But what a lot of people maybe don't know is what happens to our peafowl in the winter time. So these birds are actually Indian peafowl or common peafowl, and they're native to Pakistan, uh, India, um, some parts of Southeast Asia. So the climate that they're accustomed to is warmer than what we have here in uh, Southern Ontario. Now they are actually quite uh, well adapted to acclimating to colder weather. Um, one of the things that prevents them in the wild from moving further north is actually mountain ranges. So it's possible to have them survive in colder climates, um, but our winters here in Canada are still a little bit on the, the chilly side. And to prevent anyone from getting too cold or from getting frostbite in the winter if they don't get adequate shelter, um, we catch all of our peafowl in the fall, around uh, November, and uh, we bring them into uh, different areas that we have here, different holdings at the zoo. So this year we tried something different. We brought them into uh, this exhibit here, and it was nice to give the public, I think, a chance to see the peafowl in the winter time and kind of see how they act when they're all together as a group. Um, now, it is uh, the section we're in right now outside, but they do have an indoor part that they can go into. It's heated, and so in the winter they have access to that every single day, and uh, so they can go in there and keep warm and get out of the rain. So we actually have uh, 20 peafowl at the zoo right now. There's 12 in this exhibit, and uh, eight more are living in another holding for the winter time, just to make sure we don't have too many in one spot. Um, the exciting thing is it's spring, and so that means that we will be releasing the peafowl out on site pretty soon. So usually that happens around now, April, May, and then they'll be uh, out on site for the rest of the summer. So we're getting ready for that. We're not sure how the peafowl are going to react to having an empty zoo. Um, they're definitely, I think, going to miss the, the guests that they get to see and the, the bits of uh, leftover food they find from the guests. But um, like every year, we will still be offering them food during the summer. Um, so all the areas around the zoo, they keep an eye out for the birds and they'll, they'll offer them uh, food every day. So wherever the, the birds want to make their territory, they usually know uh, places to access food. So I've been calling them peafowl a lot. You might be used to hearing them called peacocks. Um, peacocks just refers to the males of this species. So the males are the ones with the, the really long trains. And then uh, females are referred to as pea hens. The chicks are referred to as pea chicks. So right now we don't have any little baby chicks, but um, we do have some that were hatched last summer. So at this point, they're pretty big. They're um, indistinguishable really from the adult. Um, one way that we can tell them apart though still is their eye color. So the chicks or the juveniles have gray eyes, whereas the adults have brown eyes. And then um, our male juveniles, you can tell from the, the adult males because they don't have a long train yet, but they are a brighter blue color than the females are, which are more of a, a green color. So you can kind of tell them apart that way. So it seems like they're getting even less interested in what's going on here than they were at the beginning. But uh, we have been feeding them a bit of a lunch. so. Um, for peafowl, they eat, um, they're omnivores, so they eat both um, uh, plant material and meat material. So they get uh, a pelleted diet every day, as well as um, lots of greens. So we've got lettuce and spinach for them, um, carrot in here as well. 
and then something that they get additionally that they uh, really like, this is usually more of something as a treat or um, a reinforcer, are crickets. So we've got some crickets who will probably come and find. Um, what's really uh, neat with the hens when they have chicks, um, the chicks hatch and are, they are ready to eat right away. Um, they eat on their own, but the mothers um, can catch things like insects for them and then they'll make this uh, little sound and all the chicks will come running in and know mom's got something, let's get it. And uh, it gets even funnier throughout the winter as the chicks get bigger and are about the size of mom and she's still doing that and they all rush in and try to get the bugs that she has. Uh, we've also got some uh, mealworms for them. So this is the larva of a um, type of beetle. So this is something a lot of the uh, animals at the zoo like. So we give some of those to our sea fowl as well. Um, and in the, the fall when we're trying to catch all the pea fowl, one of the ways that um, we're able to get them back uh, into the, uh, the holdings is to uh, lure them with treats. Uh, so some things like bugs are a good way to lure them inside. Um, I know uh, people might be expecting when we release the pea fowl for them all to run out really excited, but it seems to be usually a little bit less anticlimactic than that. A lot of them stick back and they're kind of not sure what to do at first. There's usually a few that uh, are ready to go right away. Um, those tend to be the males. So right now is the time of year where males, uh, they want to start thinking of breeding and attracting a mate. So they want to establish their own territory. And they will pick a spot um, that they uh, think will be a good place to attract females. And then they'll start calling. So they have a pretty loud call, um, something you definitely hear here in the summer at the zoo. And um, that's one of the ways they attract this female. And then of course, uh, other way is by those um, really long trains that they have. So uh, the trains, they will of course fan out in a full display. They'll also shake their wings, it's called wing shaking. And then the tail shaking is called uh, train rattling. Um, there's different things that females will look at when they're trying to pick a mate. Um, different studies have been done with different pea fowl um, in different parts of the world. And some of the things that the females seem to be looking for are the number of eye spots. So uh, you might notice that when the peacocks fan their trains, they have these little um, blue circles on them. So females seem to like males that have more eye spots. They also seem to be attracted to uh, males that have uh, a more elaborate call. So he's uh, putting a few more notes into his call than some of the others. They're attracted to that as well. And um, there seems to be some evidence that they're also attracted to um, the lighting. So males that are displaying in full sun and um, using the lighting to their advantage seem to have a way to uh, attract more pea hens. So they seem, the pea hens seem to like that. But um, it's definitely a really interesting thing to think about because those tails definitely seem like they would be a hindrance in the wild. They're, um, they make it harder for them to get away from a predator and they, they make them more obvious to uh, other animals as well. So the reason that we think that they have them is mainly for attracting um, there are some other theories out there though, and some people um, have put forward that they also might use them to intimidate either other peafowl, other peacocks, um, or predators. Um, so having this big flashy tail that you're waving back and forth, maybe that would scare away some animals and, um, that would want to eat them. They maybe think that's too much hassle, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, so it could also have a role to play in that way. And then uh, the males and females definitely have a, a dominant hierarchy. It's something that we notice when they're all in, in the winter time. And um, it's something that's been observed in the wild as well, usually during mating time. Um, most of the year they tend to be more solitary, but um, during mating time, they will all kind of come together. Um, lots of males displaying and lots of pea hens kind of shopping around for the, the that they like the most and that's when you'll start to see some dominance happening between different males.
So our peacocks are, our peafowl, I should say, um, they range in age from less than a year to our oldest is 21 years old. So typically um, they can live to be around 20, uh, 24 years old. So our, our 24 year, 21 year old, he's a pretty old guy right now. But most of um, our population is on the younger side right now. So I know a lot of times people have come by the peacock exhibit, um, they've seen them on site and maybe not known who to ask about the pea fowl. Now's your chance. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. I'm going to actually come around and see if I can see some of the questions and who knows, maybe the pea fowl will come closer if I move to a different spot. Okay, so Yep, they are sleeping on the perch. Um, there's actually a heating um, light over there. So that's another place in the winter time where they've been able to get extra heat. Um, on sunny days though, they seem to uh, not mind the cold much at all. And they'll actually choose to be out in the sun instead of under the heat lights or inside. Um, in the summer when we let them roam, why don't they run off? Um, I, that's always a possibility, um, but they tend to establish territories close to where they know that there's food sources and um, they know that um, the different keeper buildings here around the zoo uh, provide them with lots of food so they, they pretty much get everything that they need. Um, one thing um, that also deters them from going too far is they're not really the best flyers so they um, they do fly and they do, as you see, some of the, the male peacocks sitting up on their roost right now. That's how they spend the night, but they're not long distance flyers. Do Indian peafowl have the longest trains of all kinds of peafowl? Uh, yes, I believe they do. So there's three types of peafowl. Um, there's the Indian peafowl like we have here. There's green peafowl, which are found in um, Indonesia, other parts of Southeast Asia, which have a shorter train. And then there's the Congo peafowl, which is um, found in Africa. Uh, how old do they get? So about 20 to 24 years old. Um, in the wild, do they live in treed areas or open areas? So uh, they live in forested areas usually. So you would find them um, usually with a water source nearby and then in a forest. Um, they'll spend most of their day on the ground, but then at night they'll go up into trees. Lucas and Toronto, so why do they have such long and eye-catching tails? Um, well, again, that goes, I guess, to um, different theories that we have, but the, the probably the most um, popular theory is that it uh, attracts females. So females um, might be using that tail as an indication of how healthy that male is. So if that male is able to get around and outrun predators and look after that beautiful long tail, then that might mean that he's got really good genes that she wants to pass on to her offspring. I see some birds kinda coming over. Do we have any white peacocks? We don't have any white peacocks, um, but they are the same species. They're just um, individuals that have, um, they're called leucistic. So um, they, the pigment doesn't migrate out to their feathers the way they would for these birds. Um, albino peacocks are actually really rare. Um, those are ones that don't make any pigment at all. And the way you would tell an albino from an leucistic peafowl is albino peafowl would have red or pink eyes, whereas the more common um, leucistic white peafowl, they've got the brown eyes still. How mean are they? I think that's the question. Um, you know what, they, I find that they're pretty nice. Um, they sometimes will have maybe a, a fight between some of the males or some of the peahens um, that will fight between each other. Um, they'll kind of fight over the best spots for food. So they definitely have a bit of a, a hierarchy like that. Um, the older ones will often boss around the younger ones. But uh, with people, they, um, our peafowl tend to be really easygoing. As you can see, they're more afraid of um, us than we are of them as how, demonstrated by how shy they've been being today. 
Um, the males do have a, a kind of a claw on their back leg called a spur, and that's something that they would use um, when uh, fighting another male. Are these the ones we see walking freely around the zoo? Yep, this is them. So we're getting ready to release them um, probably in the next uh, week or two. Are the males the ones that are blue and the gray the female? Yeah, so the males um, have the long trains. Um, the juvenile males don't have a long train yet, but they are um, blue on their neck, whereas the females are more of a green color. Um, the males actually take a couple years to develop a full length train, so it can take anywhere from um, two to three years. We've got one male in this uh, exhibit and he's got kind of a short tail and that's why he's, he's only uh, a year and a half old. Do they have different personalities? I think that they do. Um, I think that there's definitely some that are more confident than others. Uh, there's others that tend to be more bossy. Um, so I think in their way they do. Um, do they have shelter to go when they are released for the summer? So usually for them, they'll take shelter up in the trees um, or they'll, they'll find different spots under some of the roofs uh, around the zoo where they'll get out of the rain. Do they lay eggs? Yeah, they lay about, um, thinking three to eight eggs usually. Um, they could lay more, but usually um, having around four on average seems to be what happens. Um, the females will uh, make a nest on the ground, so they'll just gather some loose sticks and leaves and make a spot under like a shrub or a bush. How many do you have right now? Uh, we have 20 peafowl. Um, do they have a specific nest area for them? So often what happens is the females end up just picking out a spot on site somewhere and we don't even know that it's happened because they're, they're hiding. Um, and then we'll see the pea chicks uh, hen out with chicks one day. Um, but we do sometimes keep some... Um, <laughs> So we just had one of our facilities trucks drive by and the peacocks were a little bit alarmed by that. So they made their call, um, which is kind of fun to hear. Um, and that's similar to the call that they make when they're attracting mates. Um, but uh, it tends to be uh, louder, I've noticed, when they're doing their, some of their other calls. Um, so uh, I forget what I was answering. Oh, the about where the the chicks yeah so they usually pick their own spot but we do sometimes keep some back in the uh, summertime um, to see if they will breed um, in an enclosed spot and then we we can kind of control sometimes who's breeding or if we want to make sure that we're getting chicks we might keep a, a couple females and males back um, otherwise it's kind of up to them if they want to have eggs or not who are their predators in the wild um, so they are predated by um, large cats and then also things like uh, dole, which are a type of wild uh, canine. And of course, people. So um, in a way, people have actually had a really positive relationship with peafowl because we do think of them as being so beautiful um, that we've actually helped uh, to encourage them to survive, but um, they are sometimes uh, hunted. Their call sounds like an elephant. I don't know, maybe, I guess. It's definitely really um, loud when you hear it. And I know as a kid, when I used to come to the zoo, um, I guess I associated that sound with the zoo. And so I, I like that sound because it makes me, makes me think of the zoo. But I've heard in some areas where there's a lot of peafowl um, that live kind of feral or in the wild that people don't like it because it gets too loud. Um, are they doing those noises because of feeding time? Um, so it's, what they were doing right now is a truck drove by, so I think that they were kind of alarmed about that. Um, one of the reasons I think the peafowl have been a little bit um, more cautious today is they're not used to having a lot of people come visit them the last couple of weeks. So I think they're just kind of uh, weirded out by how quiet it is because they had people visiting them all winter and they were um, totally fine with that. And now that we have a camera here, they seem to just be a little bit suspicious. Um, let's see if 
uh, how do you become a zookeeper at the zoo? Oh, that's a good question. So um, it kind of happens in different ways, but I would recommend taking science in school um, and looking at um, some type of post-secondary in science, um, either at a college program or a university program and getting experience where you can volunteering at places with animals. So cats and dogs, um, large animals, um, shelters, any, any kind of animals you can, you can learn a bit about. Have any of them become accidental prey for some of your carnivores? Um, I, I'm sure that that has happened before with um, like just that we do have wildlife on site, like things like coyotes. And um, one of the, the drawbacks to giving the peafowl more freedom in the summertime is of course that, that it does, um, there is an increased risk of things like predation happening. Um, I don't know of that being um, a very common occurrence though. Um, they are. Yes, I agree. I think they're really beautiful. Um, I think sometimes they're, um, it's, it's forgotten how gorgeous they are, but uh, when you stop and take a moment to think about it for a minute and really look at their feathers, um, they're really gorgeous. Even the females, I think, are really pretty. Can they swim? No, they can't swim and they don't bathe in water. They do drink water, but they seem um, to like to have water nearby. Uh, in their natural habitat and they also um, instead of using water to bathe uh, they use sand so there's a couple of reasons for that um, you can imagine getting wet makes you heavier so for a bird with already a ridiculously long train um, getting a little bit heavier just makes it harder to get away from predators um, and then the other thing is uh, sand a lot of birds will sand bathe and it's a good way to get rid of parasites um, and, uh, and to keep clean as well. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us for our uh, Facebook Live here at the Peafowl Exhibit. So hopefully we'll see you guys again soon and the Peafowl will be out on site roaming around. Until then, um, stay tuned. We've got uh, Facebook Live every day at one o'clock and stay safe.